and welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me today. I'm going to be telling you something that I did and you're going to have to let me know, did I make the right choice or not? So when my firewood journey began in late 2021, me and my friend Quentin were splitting a lot of wood together and we started out with a brute 25 ton log splitter. We used that for a little while and we quickly realized we needed something that was much faster. So six months went by, we used that and I found the Easton made 1222 log splitter on Marketplace and we, I bought that. It was the perfect log splitter for us together using because uh, it was really fast and had the log lift and we could just crank out a ton of wood with that. Um, like I said, great for two people. So we used that for a while and in 2023, I think May, uh, Quentin got a different job and um, he started a family, became a lot busier. He didn't really have time to do wood anymore understandable so i decided that i needed to make a change for myself and that is when i ordered this easton made ultra so i got this easton made ultra in december of 2023 and uh i've really grown to love it i've decided that this is the splitter that i want to use forever um the 1222 is just more of just a production style log splitter and i'm just a hobbyist i don't need the production style log splitter. I don't make that much wood that I can justify that log splitter anymore. And um, I've said before, using that log splitter, I was at the point where um, if I really wanted to get all the production out of it and get the value out of it, I needed to get a firewood conveyor. And again, I'm just a hobbyist. I don't make near enough money off of wood to justify having a $12,000 log splitter and another $10,000 firewood conveyor so I was at the point where I could go further into it but I think it was best to stop and just transition into this machine and like I said in previous videos like the last video I just did linked here this block splitter is just it's suited for me and there is things that it doesn't have um, that the 1222 did this is my long-term log splitter I don't ever plan on doing firewood for myself or to sell firewood if I'm not using this log splitter. I love this thing. So that takes me to the next point. About a week ago now, I sold the 1222. I uh, posted it on Marketplace and it took a while to sell. The, the market for these things I don't think is what it was before. Lead times are down for manufacturers. The economy is tough. Not a lot of people have a lot of money um, to just spend on log splitters. So it did take me a few weeks to sell it. I sold it and I wanted to reinvest that money into something else I would use. Something that is a little bit firewood related. I can definitely use it for firewood, but I can use it for other tasks or um, maybe I could make some money with it. There are a lot of different things I can do with it. So I'll show you what I, what I got now. So this is what I ended up with. This is a Bobcat E20 excavator. And you might ask, why did you buy a mini excavator? You make firewood. Well, there's a lot of things I can use this for besides firewood, but I can also use it for firewood. Um, as I think a lot of people are doing now, the mini excavator trend is growing and for good reason. I mean, it's just basically a big arm. You know, if, if you can't pick it up with your own two arms, that thing can pick it up. And they're super nimble. I can use it to move logs around, pile them up, move rounds around, stack wood. And then aside from doing all that, um, this thing is multi-purpose, so it's not just firewood. I didn't have to justify this cost based on solely firewood. There's a lot of projects I can use this for around my own property and the ash woods. Um, as far as clearing trails, cleaning stuff up, I've got some drainage ditches I need to dig on my own property. I'm always burning stuff, so I always have constantly a recycling burning hole. So that'll be nice to be able to dig new burning holes and pile stuff up. But I just, I've always wanted one of these, you know, like a kid in a candy store who doesn't want a mini excavator. So this isn't the best out there. And I will tell you some details on it and why I got it right now. So like I said, this is a Bobcat E20 excavator. It is a 2016 model. And whenever I was buying one, honestly, I really wanted a 2.6 ton or a 3.5, like a E26 or a E35. But... They were not in my price range and I didn't want to spend so much on a mini excavator that I had to make money with it to justify the cost. So this was definitely not, well, it was expensive, but it wasn't, it wasn't expensive enough to where it's going to hurt me financially. This is just a uh, fun toy to have right now. And down the road, if I find it's not useful, then I will resell it. 
this is a two-ton mini excavator. Um, when I was doing research, this seemed to be probably like the best in its class. There's not a lot of two tons. There's a lot of 1.7 tons, but they look very similar to this in size. This one had like a foot more reach than some of the 17s, which was really nice. Um, it already has the hydraulic thumb on it. I plan to get a quick coupler for the arm and um, some different buckets for it. It just came with a 12 inch digging bucket. Currently this machine has um, just at like 1700 hours, I think like 1695 or something like that. So it's not completely worn out. Um, it's with many excavators, it's kind of hard to judge on the hours just because what are they idle hours sitting waiting for somebody to do trench work or were they working the whole time? So it's got some battle wounds on it already, which is fine. I would rather buy a mini excavator used that has battle wounds rather than one that is freshly repainted and I don't know the condition of it. So it uh, it's in pretty good shape, honestly, but it's definitely not new quality. I think in the next winter, I'll probably repaint these panels and re-decal it, make it look nice. The tracks are in really good condition on it. They uh, seem to be newer. All the rollers and bushings on the undercarriage spin, the sprockets are in good shape. The boom and stick, all the pins are pretty tight. I'm not gonna say it's brand new, but they're definitely not wallered out. Uh, there was a lot of grease on this thing. So whoever had it before me definitely greased it and took care of it. This mini excavator is pretty unique um, in the sense that the tracks do retract. They will go down to 39 inches. So if you need to get into a backyard or something, you could, and then they um, go out. They're probably, I don't know, I'm gonna guess they're around 50 inches right now. So not too bad. The blade also, you can flip the ends in and make it 39 inches too. I picked this up on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. Since then, I've given it a real good working over. I've changed all the fluids on it, the hydraulic oil, the oil, all the filters, the final drives. I've greased everything really well, new air filter. Uh, so hopefully I give it the best chance it can have and uh, hopefully it holds up for me. So now I think I want to get it out and uh, just for fun, it's pretty wet today. It rained a lot and uh, I'm going to move some logs around with it and maybe cut some stuff. I don't know.
necessary? No. Just having fun. It's wet and I can't really do much else with this thing right now. So, well, this is definitely be good when you have a pile of rounds. If you do have some junk ones in your pile, like this one here has a big crotch on it. So I can take that out of the pile. Uh, I'll be able to sort rounds as far as species really easily. So again, this mini excavator is not something you absolutely need for firewood just a luxury and fortunately I'm able to own it so I'm going to enjoy it. Piece of red oak there. I made an ash pile here closest to the camera. This is all ash. Obviously this is a two-ton, so it is going to be bigger, but some of the competitors don't even make two tons. So I would really wanted a 26 because that is what I am used to running. I've rented a lot of 26s and 35s. So I was kind of concerned that if I went cheap and got a two-ton, I might be a little disappointed. And I will tell you right now, I am not disappointed. Obviously this excavator is probably not something you're gonna go out and do big jobs with, but for the hobbyist that just wants a wood yard excavator, this is gonna work out for me. I need to get a uh, rake bucket. I'm wanting to get a rake bucket for this thing. So guys, tell me what you think. Did I make the right choice? Um, I thought about this for a long time before I did it and it was tough letting go of the 1222 because I did have it for what I felt like it was a really long time. I split a lot of wood with it. I really grew to love that log splitter, but as time went on and I became a single operation, I just didn't find as much value in that and I wanted to maximize the equipment I had. So therefore it was time to sell it and get something that better suited me at this time. So again, I have no complaints with the 1222 at all. It is extremely well built. It's super solid. They hold their value really well. Um, it's fast. It's, it's a really good log splitter. It just didn't suit my needs anymore. It's just like some people ask me, why do you have a tractor instead of a skid loader? Skid loaders are heavier duty. They're faster, this, that, this, that, than tractors. But but to be honest, the tractor just suits my needs better. It works better for how I like to work. Everybody's different. So that will do it for this video, guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed, you definitely should subscribe because there's gonna be more diverse things happening. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. You guys have a great day.